This one caused a little storm, didn't it? Talking about the J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar drama after this. It is J. Cole's reply to Kendrick. Light work. Seven minute drill. Yeah, Navy, I was super confused. I was super confused by the phrasing of this. He's What I was told on Twitter is that he wasn't counting the tapes. He was just counting the albums. So he's saying that Good Kid Mad City was technically the debut, which is a classic. Fucking rap niggas. To, uh, to Pim Butterfly's boring. Damn is his prime, and Mr. Morale was tragic. Mr. Morale wasn't tragic, so that's straight away off. Oh, what's the actual bar about to Pim Butterfly? I think calling to Pim Butterfly boring is objectively wrong. It's not boring. It is difficult to listen to in places, but you can't call it boring or you can't undermine it uh, artistically. I wonder if the, are the genius annotation is going to be cooking him. Yeah, Silver Filler, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'd rather listen to you, Good Kid, than To Pimper Butterfly. I think To Pimper Butterfly is dense and difficult to listen to. It's not boring, though. I, I, it's not boring. But let, let's unpack this. Let's unpack this, chat. It is time. A warning shot. Cole interpolates lyrics from his mentor, Jay-Z's famous Nas diss track takeover and cast shade on the consistency and quality of Kendrick's discography. So... Before we get on to what's happened in the last kind of 24 hours, these are the really talked about bars. He's doing, he's still doing shows but fell off like The Simpsons, which it's a bit of a kind of meme to say The Simpsons is bad now. It's it's not like, oh, can't believe he said that. It's not like what your best effort is a light pack, which was Kendrick bringing in some deep stuff to it. Your first shit was classic. Your last shit was tragic. Your second shit put to sleep, but they gassed it. Your third shit was massive and that was your prime. So what he's saying, we'll see what Genius says. Uh, even the Genius annotations. More daringly, Cole then implies that Lamar's 2015 sophomore album to Pimper Butterfly was boring and overrated. I don't think anyone listened to Pimper Butterfly and was put to sleep. It's a difficult listen, but I don't think anyone was put to sleep. But yeah, I, I assume the same as you. I assume the same as you, Navy. I was like, Section 80s is first. I was like, who the hell said Good Kid Mad City put you to sleep? No one's sleeping listening to Good Kid Mad City. Sinner light skinned with his brains blown out at the same burger stand where just hang out. No one's falling asleep in that. But anyway, he's not saying that. Uh, and then there's a funny line about uh, trans people as well. So yeah, that, 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 that's the, the main crux of the diss. Yeah, when, <laughs> Lucas, when genius annotations is like saying your, <laughs> your bar is like controversial, you know you've kind of jumped the shark a bit. But what ended up happening was uh, J. Cole was on stage. I don't know if there's a video of this. Uh, he was addressing the crowd at Dreamville Festival. And he, he said, uh, I'm, I'm so proud of Might Delete Later, except for one part. It's one part of that shit that makes me feel like, man, that's the lamest shit I ever did in my fucking life. Yeah, here you go. This is the actual, this is his actual video talking about it. So let's let's put this on and see what exactly he's saying. That leads me up to this thing that I've been working on for a long time and I know the work it took to get to so I wonder, it, did he add the Kendrick bar shit, quite late? That shit, except for one part. It's one part of that shit that make me feel like, man, that's the lamest shit I ever did in my fucking life, right? And I know this is not what a lot of people want to hear. I know I can hear my niggas up there right now like, nah, nah, I don't do that. But I got to keep it 100 with y'all, right? <laughs> his whole team his whole team are like oh you know oh it's like that they're like oh no don't do that but he did y'all heard some shit that happened two two three weeks ago however long it was y'all 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 heard that bazooka that was dropped on the motherfucking game right so second time kendrick's done it moving on my own accord for the first time i was tested why am i tested because i got the world and i got my niggas like what you gonna do, Cole? <laughs> my niggas like, bit boy, I must have had a thousand missed calls. Oh my fucking god! Text, believable. Like, I couldn't even answer my shit. Nigga, it's war time, <laughs> right? Niggas want to see blood, and and I was conflicted because I remember you was conflicted, misusing your influence. Sometimes I did the same. <laughs> Here's the thing. This would be so powerful if he hadn't dissed Kendrick. If he had said nothing, this would be so powerful. But the fact that he, <laughs> the fact that he dissed him and then backtrack on this two days after it dropped, it's just insane. Like you've got to stick to your guns. I think it's such a good principle in life. Do not say anything publicly that you would not be willing to defend to literally anyone. 
And I know I, I feel like I've actually stuck by this as well. Like I've said some controversial things in my time. And even when I've been called up on them, I've defended them and justified them. Um, so it is just mad that it is just mad that J. Cole is backtracked so quickly because that makes it feel like it's not about what he thinks or what he feels. It's about the reaction to it that's kind of shook him a bit. The way that was that I feel spiritually feel bad on me. Like, like I try to like, bad energy out. It's only a diss track, mate. It's not that deep. And I try to keep it friendly, but at the end of the day, when I listen Yeah, if you say you're the goat and I see the talk. But it's like Spotify said, hip hop is a competitive sport. I don't think, I don't think, look, when that, when that diss track came out, I don't think anyone thought, how dare J. Cole? I mean, look, the, the, the Tabimba Butterfly line was, it was braggadacious. It was audacious, but it is a diss track. I think people are like, oh, there, there is some kind of, you could kind of see where he was coming from. Like it's a strong bar that got a strong reaction. When I say strong, I don't mean, oh, that's a really good bar. I mean, it's like, it's a, it, whatever like, it's not exactly clickbait but it's you know it's gonna get people going like, oh 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 no one wanted to see blood no well here's the thing lucas i do get where he's coming from there people wanted the drama they wanted the drama but what i don't get is it, it, he's reflecting on this now he could have easily gone now nah, you know what like i respect kendrick he said his piece i'm not going to reply in that way or maybe even his track he could have he could have reflected this sentiment in his track but what i don't get is reflecting the whole hostile yeah you fell off and um pip -pim -pim to Pimper Butterfly was overrated. Reflecting that sentiment and then saying this two days later, like, I don't know what went on there. That shit don't sit right with my spirit. That shit make me feel... That shit disrupts my fucking peace. So what I want to say right I here... I get what he means, is though. Is me doing that and, and, and that shit? Trying to find a little angle. Imagine being Kendrick. Has Kendrick reacted to this? Play this, this nigga's fucking... But I agree, Lucas. It does revive hip-hop in the mainstream. Which is already there. Like, how many people think Kendrick Lamar is one of the greatest motherfuckers to ever touch a fucking microphone? Dreamville, y'all love Kendrick Lamar, correct? Obviously. As do I. But so, but what I don't get is the whole like Kendrick Kendrick didn't ever say anything to suggest that he didn't like J. Cole. I think Kendrick is never petty like that. He's just saying I'm like better than you. He's not saying you're bad. He's just saying I'm better than you. He's like, fuck the big three, it's just the big me. So for J. Cole to turn it around to your music shit. It feels a bit like playground insults in response to just someone being confident. And obviously Kendrick's got an ego. But I think that's why this comes across so bad. It's like he's gone from one extreme to the other. He's gone from really petty and childish to suddenly trying to be the bigger man. I just want to come up here and be like, publicly be like, bro. It's like when two boxers are fighting each other. It's not like they, they they're, they're sports people. They're sports people, they're athletes, they're competing. Obviously they say some shit before, but after the fight, it's like you're all hugging it out. And then to kind of dial it back, to go from one extreme to the other. I don't know. That was the lamest, like, goofiest shit. And it make, I say all that lamest, shit, goofiest it feel shit. like 10 years ago when I was moving incorrectly. And I pray that God align me back up. On my Who wasn't moving incorrectly? It's the way he said that. I was moving incorrectly 10 years ago. Purpose and on my path. You know what I mean? I pray that my nigga really didn't feel no way. And if he did, my nigga, I got my chin out. Take your best shot. I'm going to take that shit on the chin, boy. Do what you do. You know what I mean? Like, all good. Like, it's, it's Jeez. Love. And I pray that, you know, I pray that y'all are like, forgive a nigga for like the misstep and then, and then I can get back to my true path because I ain't gonna lie to y'all past two days felt terrible like it let me know how good I've been sleeping for the past 10 years he's he's yapping he is yapping a bit I just think fair, like if he had said nothing and this is the first thing he said fair enough but it just felt so like dumb he obviously it's fair that you felt pressured to publicly respond but no one no one forced you to say that like Mr. Mara was embarrassing like you could have picked a lot of better things to say. Maybe even that Kendrick, if he really was the GOAT, wouldn't need to be like firing shots over little things like that. But it just feels like very, very badly judged. I'm generally speaking not interested in drama. Fair play, fair play. Um, but yeah, so J. Cole apologized. So yeah, that's where we're at. And I just wanted to see like some reactions on Twitter. If you look at J. Cole's name, you've got like, uh, J. Cole said he wanted the smoke on every verse, but as soon as the smoke came, he tapped out. This has to be one of the most embarrassing moments in rap I've ever seen. That's facts. That's facts, though. I think it wasn't even getting that bad. I don't think anyone was really... I mean, I, I guess I don't know what was said to him privately, if anything, but that was a very provocative verse, and I can't imagine switching so quickly from, yeah, I'm going to say this publicly in a song, to, oh, no, it's all peace and love, bro. It's all peace and love. <laughs> J. Cole won the beef. J. Cole after 20, 48 hours. I said, we don't have the capacity 
<laughs> it just feels stupid. Like, it, it, stick to your guns on that. And the, I think the big, big, big thing for me is don't say something. Don't say something that you aren't willing to justify, even when people are criticizing you for saying that. Like, I know I've said things that people really didn't approve of. But when people are like, what the fuck are you saying that? I didn't go, I'm really sorry for saying that. I've changed my mind. I go, well, this is why I'm saying it. Like, this is why I believe it. And I'll argue with anyone about that because I feel conviction. And I only say things publicly that I have conviction about. Not because I feel pressured by other people to say things that I don't believe. Because that's the, the saddest thing about this. Like, what kind of person is J. Cole if he's, you know, saying things that he doesn't believe in publicly on a song because he's got pressure from, I don't know, friends? Or from like public because that's dumb it's like if there was pressure on me to I don't know say something like negative about trans people I wouldn't say it. I don't care if like if everyone was saying Tim condemn trans people I'd be like fuck no that's not who I am I don't believe in that and I don't care how much pressure there is so it's weird that Cole seemed to cave uh, so let's see what Charlemagne had to say about it. My favorite Kendrick Lamar album. That album is Blackly Black Black. If you ask me, Blackity. Kendrick re-ushered in a black renaissance in music with that album. But that's a That album is Blackity I mean, um, I mean, yeah, it's a it's a crude way of putting it. Discussion for another day. Damn is a uh, what's the opening line? Every uh, is a star. That sample at the start. It is a black renaissance. It's a great project. I don't know if I have it as classic status, but Cole, you said that's his prime. You said that was his peak. So if that's the case, then you think that's his best body of work. So that's three classic albums we discussing. And then Mr. Morale and the Big Step was, I told y'all months ago in the future, we are going to look at that in uh, Jay-Z's 444. Wait, was he, was he saying, because Cole said that Damn, Cole said that Damn was Kendrick's peak. So is he talking about Damn now being blackity black black? important hip-hop albums of all time and you know when that's going to come when you unhealed heathens get some healing when you men grow up and that's what we are here to talk about today the rap fan in me <laughs> understands the disappointment many of you feeling cold but the man in me oh there's some fire in the background there spiritual being living a human existence has nothing but respect they, for they're playing uh so kanye part two in the background with pride and ego now i got bros in atlanta idiots on social media who we don't even know Peer pressure us to say things and do yeah. things that we yeah. don't even want to do. Yeah. It takes a real human to check himself and say, man, what I'm what I'm doing, I don't even believe. I don't even believe in. Wait, no. I don't believe what I said. I don't even believe in what I did. No, Apologize no, 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 and no, no, keep no, it no. moving. Y'all want a man no. to attack a man for your entertainment oh, because we shut are up. a culture that feeds off conflict. We just have to have some conflict to feast on. We like to see... But all of this, this is valid, but then don't diss Kendrick Lamar. Don't diss him then. Just to see like, nah, I'm not going to. And then say what he said on stage without having dissed him. It's insane because he switched it back. It's like he was like, he thought he could get away with it and he thought everyone would come out and be like, yeah, Cole won. But because it was a bit more like, oh, it escalated and got more negative. Suddenly he's like, oh, it's all love. Like, it's dumb. All of these things are true. People, I, I do think, Lucas, people did want blood. They did want the big feud. But J. Cole like, went along with that. He fed off that. And you can't do that. It's like, it's like Donald Trump, like whipping everyone up in a frenzy and then turning around and going, oh, I'm so sorry. All I wanted was peace and love. It's like, well, why did you do that then? Why did you do all these things? And admittedly, J. Cole's not on that level. But th those bars, like saying Mr. Morrow was tragic. It's not very black and white. It's not It's not like just, just the respect for someone who would put something in a song, which obviously you've thought about and you've listened to it in the mix. And you're like, yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm going to put it out. It's not like it's not like a kind of fleeting thought that he, he misjudged or said in the heat of the moment. It's something that he would have reflected on and then released. And now suddenly, like, I don't get what's changed. Like, what's changed? All the drama? Because, you know... When the shit hit the fan, is you still a fan? When the shit hit the fan, you've got to be able to justify everything that you say. You shouldn't say anything publicly or, or even privately that you're not willing to justify to people because you should only believe things that have a kind of rational basis. Uh, even if that is rooted in like emotions and how you feel, just be able to justify and rationalize why you do and say the things that you say and do. Otherwise, you're going to look like J. Cole. I'm a philosophy graduate. I believe that saying things that you don't believe in is... Um, ethically uh like reprehensible i i think it's very intellectually dishonest and kind of gross to say things that you don't actually believe in i don't understand why anyone in their right mind would do that kendrick and when the story is told of this generation kendrick's gonna be the one watch nigga watch but yeah no i get i get it i agree with this guy it's like it's just hypocritical from cole because he's just gone for, he's trying to be like both people. He's trying to be the bigger man who's rising above the beef and the drama, whilst also 
being the petty kind of MGK style, dissing Eminem like, you're shit, you're shit, you're shit. And you can't have both. You've you got to pick one lane. And if, if he had just stuck to the initial response of, yeah, you know, to pimp a butterfly is overrated and put people to sleep, there will be people who agree with you. Like, it's such a it's such a critically acclaimed album. There were people on Twitter. I saw J. Cole fans being like, oh, yeah, they, they're trying to claim, they're trying to make us think that this is quality and it's not. So I guess at least then you've catered to your audience. It, it's not probably an opinion that will get you lots of respect in the world of hip hop, but you've stuck to it. D then backtracking, it's like you, you kind of, both sides are now going to be looking at you like, oh, you know, what have you done? What have you done? So there you go, chat. That is the the tragic case of J. Cole. And I'll, I'll stand by the first thing that I said, which is you, you shouldn't ever say anything publicly that you don't truly believe and you aren't willing to defend against like, pretty serious criticism and, and that's the way of avoiding in general life getting in these kind of situations. <laughs>